Hey, Vinyl Community Elliot here, Lazy Dogs Records, and I've got a, a, a wonderful record I want to share with you today. I haven't done any uh, content in a while, so I really wanted, uh, after getting this record and listening to it several times, I really wanted to bring this to the Vinyl Community's attention and uh, highlight it for you with a little a little review. The album is uh, Sierra Feral and Trail of Flowers. Trail of Flowers. Interesting artwork on this one. I guess she's some sort of an ancient deity or something in, in this. Uh, lots of flowers painted on there. This trail of flowers. And uh, nothing, nothing spectacular about the vinyl. It's black vinyl. It arrived uh, flat with no imperfections. So, uh, I guess that is something to say about a record, isn't it? Didn't have any problems with it. Cleaned it up, of course, as I always do. Put it in a poly inner sleeve and then play it. And was uh, didn't have any uh, sound issues. Someone did uh, comment in the um, Hoffman forums that their copy seemed to have a lot of sibilance and uh, seemed to be mixed or mastered too high. I listened for what they were talking about, and I did not hear or hear any problems. I think it may have been more of a, where, where their taste ran and, and what sound they wanted. It was nice and crisp. You know, when you have acoustic instruments, I think that's important. You, you want a true crisp sound uh, that you would, would hear from an acoustic guitar or mandolin or uh, whatever instrument, and, and that's what I was hearing from this. So uh, maybe there were just some bad pressings, but this is this is no no issues whatsoever with this album. Uh, now it is on Rounder Records, and of course Rounder is owned by Concord. Now it's the old great Massachusetts independent acoustic label, uh, and bought out many, many years ago, and it's one of the uh, the Concord imprints, uh, Sugar Hill and Rounder and, and several other of those independent labels from the past. They've re retained those imprints to uh, uh, for, for certain artists to record on to give you a feel of kind of, uh, of what you might expect when you listen to them. Uh, Eddie Spear, who I'm not familiar with, produced, recorded, and mixed this record. There were a couple of tracks that other people uh contributed on in that manner, but uh, primarily pretty much everything he was involved on. They recorded this album at Sound Emporium in Nashville and Paul Black or Blakemore, Paul Blakemore mastered this at CMG Mastery. So there's the, uh, the, the details, I guess, about, uh, about the actual pressing. It came out this spring. Uh, I'm, I'm shooting this video in May, early May. Uh, it came out a few weeks ago. And uh, I was able to get it from Amazon at a normal price. It might have been $22, and, you know, free shipping if you've got Prime, pay a little taxes. So under $25. So, you know, I think a, a really good uh, deal. Um, I was not familiar with Sierra Farrell uh, prior to picking up her debut album, which came out in 2021. I picked that up recently and was so blown away by that album. That I, when I realized that her next album was in pre-order, I quickly got a pre-order in for it and received it soon after it came out. And I'm so glad I did. That debut album is an excellent album. There's differences between the two albums. They're not like just a, con the second album is not like just a continuation of the first one. It's, they're differing elements. For instance, in the first album, I really like that they used a lot of, uh, I believe, trumpet and clarinet. Uh, in the mix, uh, in the recording, uh, maybe on three or four songs, which I thought gave it a, a, a nice sound and it kept it from being, uh, being stale or, uh, you know, run of the mill, I guess you would say. And uh, there, there are no clarinet uh, or trumpet on this album, but, but uh, nonetheless, uh, lots of, of good elements to it. It's a blending of styles. It blends honky tonk, it uh, blends, um, uh, Appalachian folk music, fiddle tunes, uh, bluegrass, uh, old time music, uh, Tin Pan Alley, 
jazz. All those things are kind of um, blended. Not in each song would you find all those elements, but in different songs, uh, you would find elements of all of, of some of those things. And uh, I think it gives it a, a, a very a unique sound. Her music is unique. I don't hear heavy, um, overt uh, copying of other artists. She seems to be her own uh, artist. She, uh, she is making music that is, is product of her, uh, of her imagination. And, I, and I'm sure the producer may have had, had something to do with that or a lot to do with that for, as far as I know, but, but it's her vision that's being realized. So uh, while, while you hear elements of different types of music or even uh, hints of, of different artists, nothing's overwhelming and nothing there to say, oh, she's just doing a Dolly Parton type song or uh, she's just doing, uh, you know, uh, Leon Redbone. Uh, I think of Leon a little bit when I listen to this album. Uh, she's just uh, doing a female Leon Redbone tune here or whatever. Uh, not, none of that. It's, it's, it's her authentic self, I think. Uh, if I can borrow a, po- borrow a popular phrase from today, today's world. Uh, I, I take issue sometimes with the, the terminology Americana. Uh, not that I, I don't think that's a, a, a viable term in order to kind of get a feel for what type of music we're talking about, but because uh, sometimes I've been unimpressed with some of the new artists that have come out under the under the guise of Americana uh, for var- for a variety of reasons, and there are other artists that are just just blow me away that fall under that Americana category. But I think this album exemplifies Americana in the best sense you can use that term. It's a blending of, of uh, music from the past to create a new uh, a new sound here in the future. Now, uh, Sierra Farrell is a native of West Virginia. And, you know, origin stories for artists are sometimes suspect. I'm not saying hers is, but, you know, it's it's an interesting story. She uh, she left home very early uh, in her, uh, as a teenager and started hitchhiking and riding the rails and traveling the country. Dangerous thing, please, nobody do that. Uh, and uh, she uh, made ends meet by busking in various towns and cities uh, that she would take up residency at in at any given time. And so after several years of that, she settled in Nashville and somehow was able to gain a, uh, a contract in Nashville to record and where she's on her second album now. So we're excited about that. She is a songwriter. 11 of the 12 tunes on here are, uh, are songs that she co-wrote, three of them she co-wrote, and the other eight she wrote solely by herself. The only song that isn't a, uh, a song composed by her is a uh, an old tune from uh, from decades ago by Phil and Arthur Smith called uh, Chitlin' Cooking Time in Chatham County. And you would think that would be hokey or something but based on time, but it's actually a really good song, and, and it's not, uh, not silly or anything. Uh, as, for, as far as that's concerned, but anyway, she's uh, she's an interesting artist, and she's fairly uh, fairly young. So we've got uh, hopefully a lot of years left to see all the things that she has to offer us. I highly recommend Sierra Farrell, and the album is uh, Trail of Flowers. And her debut album is just as good as this one. And I hope everybody uh, enjoyed getting this little look at Sierra Farrell. And go out and buy the record if you so choose. 